You know what happens if you make a video about traditional martial arts? Inevitably, there's going to be some Yahoo down in the comment section saying, Well, they really need to cross train. What Taekwondo needs is to cross train with boxers. What karate needs to do is cross train with jiu-jitsu. For a good portion of people on the internet, it seems like cross training is the be-all, end-all of martial arts. Well, I'm here to tell you that's actually the worst thing you could do. Now, as is tradition with this channel, I'm going to proceed to tell you how everything you've ever done is wrong, and I'm the only one who's right. But before we get to that, make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on, just so you can find out what it is exactly you're wrong about, and it helps the channel grow. So, what is my issue with cross-training? Really, my problem is that people tend to misuse and overuse the term cross-training. In the worst case scenario, they're talking about dojo storming, which is where you go from your gym to the gym across town, down the street, or whatever, and challenge them to spar, or even worse, to fight. And while that might sound like a good idea in theory, it's really not in practice. Setting aside the legal issues that you could run into, you don't really get a feel for what another gym is like if you just march in there and challenge them to fight. You might be able to beat most of the people in that room, but you might not. And there's something to be said about the element of surprise. Just dropping in in someone's lunchtime class and challenging the business executive on their lunch break to a fight probably isn't going to go the way you think it is. But, like I said, that's the worst case example of cross-training. More likely, people are talking about cross-training the way I mentioned earlier. That is, that a boxer needs to make sure they're doing their jiu-jitsu, that the wrestler needs to make sure they're doing Muay Thai. And yes, if you're training to compete in MMA, or you care about being a well-rounded fighter, then yeah, you can't ignore striking in the name of clinching, and you can't focus only on grappling. You need to make sure you do all three ranges of combat. But, as we get more specific, that's where the problems arise. Because all too often, I'll hear that a Taekwondo player needs to go train in Muay Thai to learn how to land their kicks with power. Let me ask you, if you're training in a kick-based style, in a sport that promises to make you good at kicking, why would you need to go look at a completely different martial art in a different gym in a different part of town just to learn how to make that work? Same token, and this is going to piss off a lot of my karate friends, but why do we have to look to other styles to find living, breathing examples of our kata? Why is every Bunkai video on YouTube just somebody from MMA or Jiu Jitsu or wrestling or whatever doing something that does exist in a kata, but the way it's done in karate looks barely like the way they're pulling it off? Why is it never the karate practitioner doing it? And why is it the people that practice karate don't see this for themselves? Cross-training shouldn't be the answer to this question. The answer should be in the style itself. The practice, the application, should come from where you're training. If you're being told to go look somewhere else to find out how to make your martial art work, that's like me asking you a question and you saying, go ask that guy over there. What I'm going to do is cut you out entirely and just go ask him directly. This is with paying all due respect to people doing whatever they want that makes them happy. If you enjoy where you're training, if it's the most convenient for you, if you like your coach, knock yourself out. Have fun with that. Or if you just enjoy seeing various different interpretations of striking, grappling, clinching, whatever, then again, more power to you. The person that I'm talking to right now is the person that wants to learn how to fight and maybe doesn't feel like their gym is doing it for them, and everybody on YouTube is telling them all you need to do is cross-train. Because a Muay Thai fighter is never going to be told to go to a karate gym to learn how they strike. They might do it for fun, but they're not going to be told to do it for the betterment of their sport. But, like I said, that's not what cross-training means anyway. What cross-training really means isn't cross-style, but cross-individual. If you're training in a class of, let's say, 10 people, three times a week, then you're getting very familiar with all of your training partners. You know exactly who you're better than and who you're worse than. And at a certain point, that familiarity becomes less of a comfort and more of a detriment. Because when it comes time to spar or to roll or even to practice, you will know exactly what your friend is gonna do. And while they might be able to get the best of you, you know exactly how they're gonna do it. Our brains are programmed to recognize patterns. And after a while, it doesn't matter if your training partner is way better than you are, you will learn way less from them as time goes on than you did at the beginning. But, through the miracle of cross-training, if you go to a different gym in the same style or otherwise and see what a different person does, you are now dealing with a whole different bag of cats. Because now, you're dealing with a person that at best, you have moderate familiarity with, and at worst, you have no idea what they're about. Meaning, the way they set up their strikes, the way they go for chokes, the way they do throws, 
all of it's gonna be completely new for you. Meaning the learning experience is gonna be completely different, meaning you have the best chance of learning what the holes in your games are. Because at the same time that you're getting familiar with all of your training partners, they're getting familiar with you and they're learning to take care of you. But the guy at the other gym, he doesn't give a shit about your health and safety. Now, he might do this respectfully, but rest assured, he wants to show you that what he's doing is better than what you're doing. And while it's important that you put the ego aside and not make this a pissing contest, it's equally as important that you don't make your gym look bad. You don't want him to go to his gym and say, that guy and those people don't have any idea what they're doing. So cross training is less about taking someone from Kyokushin and partnering them with someone from Kali, and more about two different people with no prior experience to each other or very minimal experience to each other training together. It's not a style versus style thing, it's a person versus person thing. This is a side tangent, but it's been pissing me off so I wanna talk about it. I hate that whenever I talk about a martial art broadly, there's always some Yahoo in the comment section that says something like, uh, you really can't talk about a martial arts style because it's all about the individual. Yes, obviously we need to talk about each individual specific person in every single case we ever have about martial arts. But when you group together all of those snowflakes and all of them tend to move or fight or have the same kind of result in a fight, then yes, we can talk broadly about what the individual experiment has done for the collective or the style as a whole. Meaning that yes, when you're talking about one person, you need to address that one person. But if you wanna know what a thing or a style in this case is like broadly, then you also need to be able to talk about it broadly. For example, and I know I'm talking about Taekwondo a lot today, I don't have a bone to pick with them, it's just an easy example. For example, if I say something like, in general, Taekwondo practitioners are not good at punching, that is true generally. Obviously, there's gonna be examples of people that are good Taekwondo fighters and also good punchers. That doesn't mean what I'm saying isn't true, it just means it is also true that someone can be good at both. However, when we're talking about the hundreds of thousands of people that are practicing Taekwondo, they don't practice getting good at punching, so therefore, they aren't. You are totally able to criticize a martial arts style broadly and also respect the accomplishments and practices of an individual. They're not mutually exclusive and you don't sound as smart as you think. But ultimately, here's my point. The strength of cross-training isn't that you're taking style A and comparing it to style B, but it's that you're taking person A and putting them against person B. And this doesn't only apply to fighting. This also applies to training fart. <clears throat> and this doesn't only apply to fighting. This also applies to training partners and training methods. Because as much as you might love your sensei, there might be one aspect of fighting that he can't teach you. Something he's saying isn't clicking with you. But you go train with someone else across town or while you're on vacation, and all of a sudden, <laughs> things start clicking. Sometimes different people provide different perspectives, and that makes it work for you. Seen in a different way, more perspectives, more better. And that really is the argument to be made about cross style cross training. Because if you spend all your time training in Taekwondo and then all of a sudden go spend a week in a Muay Thai gym, it's gonna be very fun and very good for you to see the way they approach their setups for kicking. And while that might not necessarily be helpful because you're not gonna be standing up as tall, you're not gonna focus on low kicks and sweeping as much, you get to see the different ways they train. I think a lot more needs to be said about the methods of training and a lot less about what they're training. I don't just mean training techniques because honestly, that's choreography shit. What I'm talking about is take a class with them. See what their practice is like. Do they warm up hard? Do they warm up easy? Are they drilling with resistance? Are they drilling without resistance? What are their drills like? Seeing how gyms practice, seeing what their drills are, what their regular training is like, is way more important than what style they practice. And that is why I think cross-training is misunderstood. It's not about pitting style versus style, and it's not about saying if you have a hole here, just go to this better school down the road. It's about seeing how can I improve my training, using someone else who has the same goal as you to help you get better. It's important that you understand that while your way of training might be great, it's not the only way of training. So being aware of the other methods out there can be good for you. Not saying you have to immediately drop what you're doing and go do that, but having different drills, different training protocols in your back pocket, that can only be good for you. Now, personally, I feel like I just talked in circles for the last 10 minutes, but if I didn't, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. And if I did, let me know in the comment section because it's important for me to learn. All that being said, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. 
And if you wouldn't mind, open up the description box down there at the bottom. You can find my contact info there, as well as a link to my shop where you can pick up official combat self-defense merch. And if you're looking for gear, head on over to Combat Corner where they have some of the best training gear on the planet. As always, you guys, this has been Rob from Combat Self-Defense. I want to thank you for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. And I'll see you next time. Cross punch!